Hello everyone, this is Lucas from Chewy Painting. Today I have something big for you. I have the new AOS Dominion box. In German it's called Vorherrschaft. <laughs> this box was kindly sponsored by Taschengeld D. I want to say a big thank you for, for sponsoring them. Go check out their website. They have tons of different models, GW and really good prices. And today I want to show you one miniature of this box. I will paint single models of this box and post them as a tutorial. And I will start with the orc boys. I've already assembled them, but I will do alternative color schemes. So every mini I will be posting a tutorial about will be in a complete different look. And today I want to start with these, but with a slightly different look, I will get rid of the shield because I really don't like that they have faces on their shields. I will give them a proper wood shield and go for a desert sheen. So here you can see the original model on the left and on the right, my converted one with the wood shield. I've also prepared a base, just threw a couple of branches on it and we can start airbrushing. On top of a black undercoat, I'm going with Vallejo Model Air Beige. I'm basically applying it like a zenithal highlight, so from the top and all the shadows will stay black. On top of this, I will add yellow, a yellow tone from Vallejo also. I'll just spray a little bit next to the model to get rid of the previous color, so you can get the pure tone of the new yellow tone. Still, it's very subtle as you can see here, but with the second layer, you can see the more orangey and yellow tones coming out, which will be our foundation for the base look. Top of this, I'm having the Vallejo model color called Buff. It's like a beige tone. It's probably pretty similar to Ustapi Bone. And here you can see I'm doing it way more carefully, applying it only on certain areas that pop out and stand out and still going with the technique of zenithal highlighting, so just from above. For the base, I'm only applying the color from one side, so there's a bright side and a dark side. We're going in with the last step, which is titanium white for the highlights. Even more careful this time, applying the white on the tones we have established before, and just picking out certain highlights, like on the shield, but we'll also add some on the other parts of the shield. And the same goes for the base. So we are applying the whites only on certain areas to make things pop out and stand out. And on the edge of the base going to the very bright. So here you can see the dark side and here's the light side. <laughs> Luke and Vader would probably agree. Um, Next up is some ink. So we're going in with raw umber, applying it from below, trying to smoothen in the shadows. And the same for the base, always switching between the two models so you don't have to change the color in the airbrush all the time. It's just way more convenient. Okay, now that we have airbrushed the model, we can start applying the other colors with a classic method with a brush. And for this, I will be starting to try out because I don't know the look of the mini yet. I want to try out what colors go with what area. And usually I do this by starting with the areas where I already know what color they're gonna get. So let's start with the shield because that's made out of wood and that's obviously gonna be painted in wood color. And with this method, you kind of ensure the areas where you already know the tone, and then you kind of look at the miniature and see, okay, this part is already brown. So a good contrast for that is a turquoise blue, something like that. And we will go in the process and see how the mini turns out. Next up are some contrast paints. And for applying those, I can very much recommend using the contrast medium, the technical color, 
I always mix the contrast paints and I will show you a special technique that I use in order to get rid of uh, blobs and uh, water puddles or contrast puddles and in order to get a really nice contrast uh, in the mini from very dark tones to basically the, the airbrush undercoat. So you have a dark to light transition with contrast paints and all with the help of this. So I will show you this trick now. Okay, here comes my special technique. First of all, you want to build some puddles with the contrast medium and I'm adding some wild wood and you can see it's very little mixing it up and it's still a little bit too white. So I'm adding a bit more and some Saigo Brown as an addition in a third cup. And you can see how thin actually the, the wild wood is. And I'm applying this onto the model and you can see it's very diluted and not the actual wild wood color. And here we're applying the Saigo Brown, which is pure and you can see how dark it is and how big the contrast actually is. And now we're blending this by just tipping in pure medium and you can already see the effect that is going to happen. We're basically working with very diluted colors and with pure contrast paints in the bottom parts for those darker tones. And with pure medium, we're doing a transition between these two. So here is pure wild wood and you can see how dark it looks in contrast to the diluted ones. And you can wipe off any excess paint in order to get an empty brush and then you can move the color around but you got to be quite quick for this progress since uh, the contrast paints are drying very fast so only work on small areas of the model move the colors around and then move on to the next one because otherwise you will get these ugly puddles that you maybe know of agrax earthshade when you're applying too much same goes for the spear and his leg parts so we're applying the thin coat on top of it and letting it dry afterwards. I'm looking on the model, checking for any other parts that I want in this contrast paint, just to apply first colors. And I've decided to go on to these knots where his leather has been knitted together. And I'm just applying this to get good contrast around these and we will obviously paint them uh, properly later. It's just just as a first step. Yeah, that's what the model looks like after this very first step with the diluted contrast paints. We have the web palette and the mini. Let's start painting. Now let's step to the classic colors, get your wet palette and here I will show you the colors I will be using during the video. It's very basic, I'm applying black and white for shadows and highlights and in between some yellow oxide from Chimera colors, some Mornfang brown, Petao green and Gal Vorbach red and I'm mixing some of the tones in between, adding different tones and colors just to get a feeling of what colors I want to use and already darkening it for later progresses. But I will be showing the color palette in between just for you to, to check what actual color is being used. Since I want to start with the non-metallic sword, I'm adding some Fatalo blue. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Fatalo blue and some whites. And in this combination with black and white and a little bit of blue, you're getting this cold steel look and we're starting with the non-metallic weapon. You can be definitely way more patient and taking much much longer for this kind of weapon process and there are tons of video about this but I'm showing you my quick and dirty way of doing a non-metallic weapon which is rather rough. You can see the color is quite diluted, it's quite thin here I'm blending it into the darker tones and getting rid of the color in between. You can see how I'm adding white and just adding on top of it all the time. And the color is still wet, so it's kind of wet blending. And you can also see that I'm doing it quite quickly, quite rough. You don't have to be too precise. It's still orc metal, 
So you have any excuse to be uh, rough and quick. Now I'm going in with pure white and I made a little mistake. You can just wipe it off again and kind of a stippling movement I'm doing here and there where it's appropriate and I'm trying to catch the, the edge highlights with the side of the brush which is really easy and it's my favorite step since these new models are made for exactly this kind of thing. We're switching the blue for a yellow tone to get a warmer gray and now we can apply this for the lower side of the weapon. On the opposite sides of the white spots we will do our darkest tones for the lower part and since this is reflected in the desert ground we're using the warmer tones on the bottom and here again going in with the lighter tones for the top part because there is probably a sky so it's more likely to have blue reflective upper part and lower warm desert tones reflective parts in the lower part. I'm using a lot of water here so that the colors can blend smoothly but this also makes the colors dry much longer which is why I'm always switching between the upper side and the lower side. So we're turning with the blue tones to the upper part and with the warmer ones to the lower part and I'm just trying to figure out here how much of the bright parts are going to be blending into the other parts. And here you can see how the result looks for now. We will do the same for the bottom part and you can be a lot quicker and a lot rougher since this will be a part of the model that will not be looked at a lot. So just same technique, start with the dark tones, adding in more and more white and concentrating on certain reflective points and then blending it in. Here you can see how much water I'm actually using for this step. And then you can enhance the darker parts and enhance the shadows, make it more contrasty. Non-metallic is all about contrast. You want pure white and pure black basically. And you can always see that the brightest parts on the upper side are contrasted on the, on the lower side with basically pure black. So it's always this high contrast of white and black. For the lower side of the sword, you can also just use a flash shade in order to do this desert tone and with an empty brush, get rid of the excess color. Okay, next up for all the leather parts, I want to show you some stippling. So we will do small dot movements with a brush in order to kind of fake the, the structure and the texture of the leather and it will give it a good used look and look way more realistic, especially in contrast with all the non-metallic parts, which is smooth and flat. And then the stippling kind of will give more of a material look. So the mini has different materials like metal and leather, and we will kind of implement that into our painting style. So let's get started. Okay, I've painted all the parts where I already know what color they will be. So I'm trying now this blue tone for most of the cloth, mixing in some Gal Vorbach red in order to get a more interesting hue for the shadows and diluting it quite a lot and just applying it on top of the model to get a nice undercoat and a feeling of how saturated I want this color to be. And now I'm just priming the leather parts. Once this thin coat has dried, you can go over it a second time. We all know, <laughs> we all know the two thin coats of paint, right? For the lower part, I've decided to go with a reddish tone and not paint the entire mini in this blue tone just to give it a more interesting look and these two colors work quite well together and since we use the Gal Vorbach red in the shadows of the blue tones it will be a nice color family. So I'm switching between the two parts once one part is dry I can move back to the blue tones and once the blue tones are drying 
because of all the water, I'm moving back to the red parts. But for highlighting, I'm basically adding more and more white to this process and getting the colors down, focusing on the upper parts where the sun or the light would hit the model. So here again, second undercoat for the lower part of the cloth and adding in some Evil Sun Scarlet and a little bit of yellow to make it even warmer and going on over the highlights. And here comes the stippling I was talking about. Not sure how this is actually called since stippling is usually more of a dot movement and I'm mostly doing a stripe movement but I really like this for this kind of rough leather cloth kind of structure. It gives the model this kind of pattern that you want for cloth and for orcs and rough cloth. It totally makes sense. Try to focus for holes on just the lower part. It's looking much more realistic. We're going in with basically a lot of white for the highlights and doing the highlights in this stippling stripe technique, whatever you want to call it. We're trying to do the stripes in different directions. So you're trying to over blend it nearly perpendicular. So you get this checkered pattern. And with the mixture you have on the brush, you can pick out all the other details you want in the same tones and going into the white, hitting the lower parts of the holes is very important for that realistic look. And don't overdo it, leave certain parts dark. Here I'm going in with the darker tones again for the mid-tones and leave it like that at a certain point. Armor, I didn't really know what I was going for. I wanted to integrate some red tones and brown tones into the model. So I thought while painting it, maybe going into a copper direction, I undercoated everything with Evil Sun Scarlet and added some black and Mornfang Brown to darken certain areas. And then I decided to go for a non-metallic look, but didn't really know yet what type of metal it should be and decided to just go with a classic technique of highlighting and darkening. So this stage was a quite flexible process and I added in more and more white and had a certain look at one point and decided I wanted to give it more of this copper look. So I shaded the entire model with Reclan Flesh, which was more like a glaze. While the shade was drying, I went on with the wood, which is basically Morfang Brown and some yellow oxide and the highlights added in more and more white. So I was focusing on the upper parts of the shields since those are the ones that get hit by the light the most and everywhere where there are edges, I will add more white. Same goes for the spear. I'm focusing on the upper half adding in more and more white and just focusing on certain points. So never drawing an entire line from the back to the front and then some final touches on the shield. In the meantime, the shade on our armor has dried and we continue with the work. And I've decided to add some scrag brown to get more of this orangey tint into the armor and I'm working in the mid-tones mainly, glazing the tones more into this direction, making it more look like copper. I'm working in another layer of highlights, going more and more into the pure white to get this non-metallic look with white contrasting dark tones. Now with the oxide tone, I'm trying to go around the screws and make this weathered look. So just focusing on the lower parts of the screws and drawing a small line that looks like rain has drawn the oxide down the armor. Final step is pure oxide for a mini highlight.
in this step I have mixed a bone color together. It's basically yellow oxide with a little bit of white and I'm picking out some of the details on the legs and everything that could have this color. Also the stitches that's holding the cloth together are getting one layer and later on I will even highlight these even further mixing in more and more white. So here we're basically at pure white just giving it a small dot on the very top corner making it pop and stand out even more. And with the pure white I'm also highlighting the skull. While painting I have noticed that between the stitches there is not enough contrast so I'm going in with Agrax Earthshade drawing a line between these separating those two parts of the cloth even more and you can see how it stands out even more. For this alternative color scheme I definitely do not want to do green skin so let's paint the skin next and see what color we come up with. As mentioned before I wasn't sure what color the skin should be at the start of the project but now that all the rest of the colors have been applied I decided to kind of stick to the base coat and just start shading it. For this I used Agrax and Karaburg Crimson so this purplish tone I only applied around the hands and elbows and the toe area and the scars. Then I mixed some yellowish tones with Mornfang Brown and highlighted all the upper parts of the muscles and skin tones. Everything that is directed more towards the sun like the upper parts of the hands is brighter and here for the lower parts of the hands and the back of the elbow I'm using darker tones. After these darker tones it's basically pure white and just a little bit of yellow for the very upper parts of the body highlighting it a lot and then loosening the yellow and going in with pure white for very small and subtle details like the toenails. For his face we're catching some parts of the lip and upper kin and obviously the teeth. Taking my purple shade again to do the shadows and lower parts of the scars and some parts of the skin. Okay and as a last step I want to paint the base because the model is already finished and I know the color tones of the model and I can choose if the base is supposed to contrast the model or go with the model so pick up certain tones of the model and be more implemented or if it should be a nice contrast to the model. We will definitely use some pigments in order to do a transition between the base and the miniature and since it's sand and dust all over the place it totally makes sense. So let's do this last step and then have a look at the miniature. Mixing in a yellow and white we're highlighting certain parts of the base Remember we tried to stick to one bright side and one dark side with the base so try to follow that and applying the highlights only in that direction of where the light would be coming from. If you follow that step you can see on the base you have one bright side and one dark side. So next up is finding a good spot for the mini. Take your time with this and then glue the model onto the base and once it's fixed we can start adding last highlights and pigments. I'm using Sienna Natural from Vallejo. You can just throw it onto the model and blow off or get rid of any excess pigments with an empty brush or your fingers. The last step I used AK Interactive's dry ground to fill some small gaps make the model more integrated into the base. And now we're ready to have a look at the final model.
yeah, that was it for today. Thanks for showing up and let me know in the comments what you liked and what you disliked and please don't forget to subscribe. It helps me a lot. And then we will see each other next time when I have another of these orc boys. I will be converting it again, getting rid of the shield again because I like the look of the new shield a lot. And then we will do a completely different color scheme. Maybe swamp, maybe wood, maybe ice. You can stay curious. I don't know what's going to be as the next video yet either but it's gonna be different color schemes for the orcs of the new AOS Dominion box. Yeah, thanks for showing up. Chewie's out and goodbye.